Hey, what's up, my friends? Graham Baldwin here from the Speaker Lab. Welcome back to another speech breakdown where today we're going to be taking the 2017 Toastmasters International World Champion. And we're going to be taking his talk, breaking it down. So, a lot of good stuff here. Toastmasters, we got some mixed feelings on. We did a review recently on the 2018 World Champion. Uh, lots of people liked it, some people didn't like it, and uh, lots to learn, lots to improve on, and lots to uh, take away for your next presentation as well. So, make sure that you subscribe, like, and comment below. Uh, but before we get there, let's get into this footage. Enjoy. I was 24. Okay, so a uh, big fan of coming out, uh, pausing, planting, letting the audience uh, finish their applause, and then beginning. That felt like a really long pause. So there's a, there's a, a fine line between a pause that, that is appropriate and a pause that just like all of a sudden makes it awkward. Um, I've heard it takes uh, three to four seconds to make a, an awkward pause, an awkward moment, awkward silence. That's what I was looking for, awkward silence. That felt like it was pushing it there a little bit. Years old. I had a nice job, nice car, nice hair. Still, my girlfriends. Now, uh, one of the things he just did there is he made a little joke there, right? Good little joke. He obviously has no hair, but his facial expression didn't exactly match what he was talking about. So, several years ago, I had a nice uh, job, I had a nice car, I had nice hair. And he's just like still serious and stoic about it. So anytime like you can even just crack a little bit of a smile there to kind of let the audience know, kind of let them in on like, the, hey, this is a joke. You can, you can, you can laugh, you can relax. Um, but his face didn't necessarily match the, the joke. Didn't stay for long. Have you ever had problems in your relationships with others? What was wrong with them? Good line. Contest chair, ladies and gentlemen. When I was 24, I was living in India. I was still waiting for Cupid to shoot his arrow and find me the perfect partner. Guess what? It seems Cupid does. Now let's talk about something else here. Now one of the questions we get from time to time is, "Hey Grant, I am, um, I have a, an accent, or I have a, um, a what feels maybe like a speech impediment in some way, or something like that that makes your 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 voice or your your talk sound a little off to other people." So people ask, you know, should I do something about that? Should I get speech training? Should I, you know, change it or try to adjust it? It's only a problem if people can't understand what you're saying. So two things that you can do is if you are someone who, let's say that you have some type of accent of any kind, inter internationally or domestically or whatever it may be, two things you can do. One is you can slow down your talk. And the second thing you can do is make sure you enunciate. The more you enunciate, the slower you talk, the easier it is for people to comprehend you and to track with what it is that you're saying. Now, I am someone who I speak, I speak very quickly. As far as I know, I don't have much of an accent, but uh, one of the things I still do is because I speak quickly, I try to make sure that I'm very clear in my enunciation. So even if I'm speaking fast, I can still enunciate so people can still track with what I'm saying. So nothing wrong with if you have some type of accent, again, whether it's international or whether it's a Southern accent in the US or wherever it may be. And in fact, those things can be oftentimes endearing to an audience as long as they can still understand what it is that you're saying. So as long as you slow down, as long as you enunciate, you should be okay live in India. <laughs> Soon I went to another angel who had all the answers. My mama. Mama, I can't find good girls. How will I ever marry? She said, no problem. We can fix it. My mama offered to introduce me to some good girls. Nice mama. Soon arrangements were made for my meeting with the first prospect, Sindhu. There she was. Wow! In a beautiful blue dress, she looked like a star from Bollywood. She looked at me like I was George Clooney. Cupid shot his arrow and we fell in love. Do you remember a time when you got into a new relationship? What were you expecting? 
I imagined spending the rest of my life holding her hand, listening to music, and doing hot yoga. Now, a good example there of using humor where uh, when, you, when you, you say something and you, you allow the audience to go, get there first in their minds, but it's actually you go a different direction. So uh, for us to do hot, could be anything that he was going to say there, but pausing, let the audience try to guess ahead of you and then go a different direction and go yoga, which is where most people probably didn't think he was going to go with that. Two weeks later, on the 4th of July, we got married. On America's Independence Day, I lost my independence. Good line. We sailed through our hundred Again, did you notice that he could have smiled? Because he kind of kept a, a, almost like a serious straight face. On America's Independence Day, I lost my independence. It's kind of stoic, kind of serious there. So he could have just cracked a little smile just to, again, let the audience in on, hey, this is a joke. It's, o it's okay to laugh. Then differences started to emerge. She liked outdoors. I liked indoors. She loved swimming. I feared drowning. She liked cooking. I liked to tell her how I miss my mama's cooking. Hey, I didn't want to follow her ways and she wasn't willing to change. We argued over big things or small things, even for nothing. I used logic. I used emotion. I even showed her a role model. Darling, why can't you just be perfect like me? <laughs> Within six months, we grew apart. Under one roof, we were two people living in solitude. No holding hands, no music, only silence. Looking for solutions, I asked my friend Jay. He just had his divorce. Now, one of the things he's done here is as he's talking about different characters in his story, he's, he's going to different parts of the stage to kind of almost signify this is where that person is. So if you notice to his left, that's when, I, when he's pointing to his left, who is he referring to? He's referring to his mom, right? When he's talking about to his right, he is talking about who? He's talking about his, uh, I assume, ex-wife. He's going now further back. He takes a step back on the stage. He's talking about his friend. So he's moving to kind of signify so that way, again, when he's pointing to a different spot on the stage, we kind of have gone there in our mind of who it is that he's referencing. He was the expert. Jay said, man, life is short. Don't suffer. Separate. No, Jay, I just want to fix it. Exactly. My lawyer will fix it. I called my mama. Next day, so again, he pointed to the left. Again, we kind of signified like to his left, that's where his mom would be. So whenever he kind of references that way, I, I called my mama and he starts moving that direction. To both Sindhu and me, she said, you will never find a partner who is 100% perfect. You fall in love because of Cupid's arrow. But what keeps you in love is Cupid's bow. You see, the bow and the string have a great partnership. The more the string pulls back, the more the bow bends. Ego is what pulls the string. Still, the mighty bow bends because it cares for the partner. When she pulls, you bend. When you pull, she bends. If you pull too hard, your relationship will break. It's a good life lesson. If you That's want nice. to fix it, both of you need to pull less and bend more. Pull less and bend more. 
Have you seen anyone who pulled now That's a good example of, of probably, you know, days or weeks later, people aren't necessarily going to remember, hey, that guy's talk, what was the talk about? Uh, there's something about love and relationship that he was in and his mom and something, something, something. But that key phrase, pull less, bend more, than, and even the visual, if he just said, you know, you want to pull less and bend more towards, and without the example or the illustration of the bow and the arrow, then people are probably not going to remember it. But when they can, they can picture the visual of Q Cupid's uh, bow and arrow there, and the bow um, um, bending and the rope pulling or the string pulling there, then it's a lot easier to remember to pull less and to bend more. So good visual example there, of, of and then also just having like a key point, just four key words that he wants them to remember uh, from the talk. Too hard have you pulled too hard? Since then, during arguments, I became more flexible. When Sindhu wanted to go out, I joined So again, he's talking about his wife. So now where is he going? He's going to his right, right? So that's where he's signifying uh, the relationship was. When she wanted to swim, I joined her at the shallow end. <laughs> when I became nice, she became nicer. Soon she started cooking better than mama. In my search for the perfect partner, I discovered that perfect partners are those who keep perfecting their partnerships by choosing to pull less and bend more. You can see problems in any relationship, within families, between friends, between colleagues, between races, cultures, nations. Today it seems like a world is breaking apart, doesn't it? Still. When you look at this room, you see people from 142 different nations sitting together, shoulder to shoulder, and getting along fine. How is that possible? Toastmasters, you are proof that no matter what our differences are, by choosing to pull less and bend more, we can stay together. Last month, my wife and I celebrated our 19th anniversary. Cool. Yes, that's the same wife. Good key point there, good way of bringing it full circle, and then also a bit of humor there of kind of telling the story right early on, which I, I mean, you heard me just a few minutes ago. I didn't think they were going to make it. I thought they were splitting or something. Uh, and so him now saying, hey, fast forward, and last month my wife and I celebrated our 19 years of being together. Uh, it's a great way of bringing it full, full circle there because it's not the way people probably anticipated the story was going to go. Uh, and then making the joke that because most of us assume, myself included, that they had split, referencing it's the same woman that he's been referring to, uh, is a good injection of humor. Do you think we still argue? Yes, but now even when we argue, we are still holding hands. My mama is no more with us, but her words still rings in our ears. Pull less and bend more. Pull less and? More. Contest chair. Very nicely done, good job. It's quite ahead on that deal. All right, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that breakdown of Minaj's talk there and the 2017 world champion of speaking in uh, Toastmaster. So really great job from, uh, from him and a great story, great illustration. Pull less, bend more. You're probably gonna remember that. Hope you do. Probably a good life lesson there. Hey, again, as always, make sure that you like this video. Make sure you comment below and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of these videos that we are offering on, an, on a weekly basis. Don't forget in the comments below to let us know what is one key takeaway that you learned that you're going to be applying to your next presentation. All right, my friends? We'll catch you next time. You're awesome.